The winds of change have come, heralding the long-awaited arrival of a new energy source upon the market. For years, nuclear thorium has been seen as a potential source of clean energy with the promise of creating a more sustainable and safer world. Now, after decades of research and development, the technology is finally here. The question is, could this be it? Is the impossible finally possible? What does this mean for the future of energy sources? How will this change our daily lives and impact generations to come? Let's dig in! For those who may not be familiar, nuclear thorium is a type of nuclear energy that uses the element thorium instead of uranium as its fuel source. This means that it produces significantly less nuclear waste, and the waste it does produce is much less radioactive and has a shorter half-life. This makes it a much safer and environmentally friendly option compared to the traditional nuclear energy. But that's not all. Nuclear thorium is also incredibly abundant, with estimates suggesting that there's enough thorium on Earth to power the planet for thousands of years. This means that it could finally help us break free from our dependence on fossil fuels and move towards a sustainable future. But don't just take our word for it. Nuclear thorium is already being implemented in countries worldwide, and the results are astounding. From reducing carbon emissions to providing reliable clean energy to remote areas, the benefits of this technology are undeniable. Thorium, a somewhat radioactive element found naturally in the Earth's crust and named after Thor, the Norse god of thunder, was discovered in 1828 by a Swedish scientist Jans Jacob Berzelius. It is found in greater quantities in nature than uranium and, unlike uranium, is fertile rather than fizzle meaning it may be transformed into fissile material via radiation. It's intended to be used with other nuclear fissionable materials like uranium and plutonium that have been recycled. Nuclear reactors using uranium as the fuel source were developed after World War II. These were very much like the reactor designs used to create nuclear bombs. In the meantime, the United States government constructed a prototype molten salt reactor that burned U-233 fuel, a fizzle substance produced by neutron bombardment of thorium. The Oak Ridge National Laboratory MSRE reactor ran at full significance for almost 15,000 hours between 1965 and 1969. The thorium-based reactor was successfully built and tested in 1968 as announced by Nobel laureate and plutonium discoverer Glenn Seaborg to the Atomic Energy Commission, of which he was chairman. However, the United States government finally settled on uranium technology in 1973, thereby ending thorium-related nuclear research. Thorium's breeding ratio was deemed insufficient to produce enough fuel to sustain the establishment of a commercial nuclear industry, while uranium-fueled reactors were more efficient. After that, no significant progress was made in our understanding of thorium for three to four decades. Edward Teller, the father of the hydrogen bomb, and other nuclear scientists studied the viability of using thorium and recommended restarting thorium nuclear research and building a small prototype plant. The number of thorium reactors in operation worldwide has increased from zero in 1999 to several research reactors and several commercial plans for developing full-scale thorium-based reactors for use in national-scale power facilities in 2023. Thorium does not produce energy by participating directly in a nuclear fission reaction. Rather, it produces energy through a process called the thorium fuel cycle. Thorium undergoes a transformation known as the thorium fuel cycle in which it is changed from a fertile source fuel to uranium fuel suitable for fission. When thorium-232 absorbs a neutron, it changes into thorium-233, which undergoes beta decay to produce protactinium-233 and then another beta-minus decay to produce uranium-233. After it gets going, the process generates energy and keeps going on its own thanks to the fission of uranium-233 which converts further thorium in the area into the same nuclear fuel. This is the only known method of transforming the copious naturally occurring thorium-232 into a fissionable substance. Given that uranium-233 is not abundant in nature yet, functions superbly as a nuclear reactor fuel, its production is at the forefront of the industry.
Most planned molten salt reactors can use the thorium fuel cycle, therefore, this is a very important fuel cycle. So why not just continue using uranium-233 rather than converting thorium into uranium-233? One of the reasons why thorium is a fascinating alternative to uranium, the same amount of 35 tons, except that 33.4 tons are comprised of U-238, 0.3 tons are comprised of U-235, 1 ton is comprised of fission byproducts, and the remaining 0.3 tons are comprised of U usable plutonium. However, when thorium is included in the formula, everything changes. The quantity of fission byproducts produced while burning only one ton of thorium is the same. In addition, 83% of these will be stable over the next 10 years. The remaining 17% has to be put away for safety for about 300 years. This is because of the whole wide variety of byproducts generated. Furthermore, there is the possibility of forming a negligible quantity of plutonium, which is considered bad. Because the heat and radiation causes severe damage to a section of the uranium fuel rods, those fuel rods have to be removed before the fire consumes them. Thus, one ton of natural thorium generates the same amount of usable energy as an average of 35 tons of enriched uranium. To put the icing on the cake, Thorium is three times more common than uranium in the Earth's crust. Another advantage of thorium is that, in comparison to uranium, it is a lot less radioactive. The Manhattan Project in 1939 demonstrated the potential for atomic energy to cause widespread destruction when enriched uranium is used to create weapons. Ever since then, this has been one of the most pressing concerns. Since the Fukushima tragedy in 2011, the threats presented by uranium fuel rods, radioactive waste, and reactor decay have received great attention. This is a primary reason why experts are considering thorium reactors seriously. Since thorium itself is not fissile, it is possible to stop reactions in an emergency. But there is also the possibility that the highly radioactive heavy water used to cool the fuel rods might leak into the surrounding environment. It is crucial to remember that there have been instances in history when nuclear bombs based on thorium have been detonated, even though thorium is generally seen as a good option for non-proliferation regarding nuclear weapons. Despite the fact that this is a possibility, the nature of these weapons makes them difficult to handle and easy to detect. As a result, using thorium reactors may make it possible for nations to reap the benefits of nuclear power while simultaneously reducing the likelihood that they are secretly building nuclear weapons. Thorium can be used in different types of nuclear reactors, and different countries have started working on their plans to use thorium for producing energy instead of uranium. The Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics will operate an experimental reactor that can produce 2 megawatts of thermal energy. This amount of energy is sufficient to power around 1,000 houses. If the trials are fruitful, China intends to construct a reactor with a power output of 373 megawatts by 2030. It could have the potential to provide electricity to tens of hundreds of thousands of residences. According to Jian K. Jun, who works at the Energy Research Institute of the National Development and Reform Commission in Beijing, this sort of reactor is one of the ideal technologies that should assist China in accomplishing its objective of having zero carbon emissions by the year 2060. When the Chinese government decides to turn on its pilot reactor, it will mark the beginning of the operation of the first thorium molten salt reactor since 1969. During that time period, scientists from the United States turned down their reactor at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which was located in Tennessee. China actively invests in various sophisticated nuclear technologies, including molten salt reactors. An international forum in 2002 highlighted six potential reactor technologies that should be expedited by 2030. These technologies included reactors that were cooled by lead or sodium liquids. Research and development initiatives exist in China for every single one of them. While China has set a goal to become carbon neutral by 2060, it could achieve this goal by installing thorium-fired nuclear reactors 
in place of the boilers in its existing coal and gas-fired power plants. But these reactors do have some complexities. Since the 1970s, thorium has been recognized as a promising alternative to other nuclear energy sources. It is difficult to imagine that the safety and efficiency advantages of thorium reactors have not led to greater popularity in their usage, yet there are reasons why this is the case. To put it another way, reactors based on thorium are not yet feasible for the most part. Uranium has profited for decades from research, development, and infrastructure because it had dual uses during the Cold War, including the production of bombs and electricity. This research has helped governments set up procedures, infrastructure, and knowledge bases that make uranium-based energy sources more accessible. Second, there is a current deficiency in the amount of operational experience the nuclear industry has with the thorium system. The only time thorium was ever used in the reactors was after the conclusion of World War II at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the 1960s. Because it has not yet been shown to be successful on a commercial basis, there are concerns surrounding its commercial feasibility. Since thorium does not work very well in the reactors now in use, new designs will need to be developed. All of this raises the issue of whether adequate financing is available. Therefore, thorium reactors are not expected to outcomplete uranium oxide reactors very soon. With more research and development, there is potential for thorium reactors to become more popular in the future. So, let's raise a glass and toast to the future of energy. Nuclear thorium is here, and it's here to stay. It's time to say goodbye to pollution-producing uranium and hello to a brighter, cleaner, and more sustainable future.